Hey, it's Taylor, and welcome back to Beyond Basketball, where we apply the deep game principles not only to basketball, but to your overall growth and development and your life as a whole. And so if you're into this type of material, make sure that you hit the link in the description where we have a special gift for you that I'll explain more about at the end of this clip. Enjoy. Emotional development means being able to act skillfully, not only when you feel courage, love, when you feel good, gratitude, so on, but being able to act skillfully when you feel afraid and not so great, you know, when you feel reactive, but you don't react. There's a measure of emotional development when you can accomplish the goal when you don't feel good to the same degree that you could accomplish it when you're feeling good. That requires a degree of emotional development. So it's the ability to continue acting skillfully regardless of how you feel. That's a clear sign of emotional development. And I think the higher level view, like the practitioner view, is that fundamentally there is no such thing as a bad or unworkable emotion. They're all useful. So high, high level, like sort of turquoise view, I suppose, is that there's no preference. <laughs> it's hard to imagine a reality that way, but that's when it's like emotions move like your fingers, when you actually have no preference over your emotional experience. Exactly as it is, is perfect. Could you imagine the power that would give you if there was no resistance whatsoever within your system? What if you could experience fear as a pleasant emotion? <laughs> Can you imagine that reality? If you could experience heartbreak and suffering as a pleasant emotion and the power, just the like, sheer amount of energy that would free up in your system because fundamentally, you've, probably heard me say this a million times, emotion is energy in motion. So emotions are only a problem if we get in the way of them and we block them and resist them because it stops the energy from moving. Energy in motion, emotion, emotions are energy and information. So they're energy that carries information and the purpose of an emotion fundamentally is to give you the appropriate energy to deal with whatever situation you're facing and to provide information, feedback from the environment to help you update your behavior based on the environment. So when I was going through a particularly stuck period of time during a call, a teacher of mine said, and again, this is super simple, but at a certain point, he like, I think he could just hear my language pattern and where, where my mind was at. And he just very pointedly was like, trust your emotions, trust them. <laughs> this is not a like system that's, maladapted and should not have been a byproduct of evolution. Like emotions evolved for a reason when we were, I think I wrote about this recently, when we were monkeys in the jungle getting chased by apex predators, emotions are what alerted us to threats in the environment. Like fear was a survival mechanism. We see a lion, fear shoots through our system, we bolt upright and suddenly we have all of this adrenaline and clarity and energy and hyper awareness to survive, to make our escape. And then in, in addition to that, the fear carries all of this energy that says like, hey, lions are over there, <laughs> you know? Without these uncomfortable emotions, we wouldn't be here. We'd, we would have gone extinct a long, long time ago have something? Good. Um, 
So as a, as a follow-up to the discussion, so we talked about problems of lack of emotional development. What might be the purpose of various emotions? Let's, let's say uh, we talked about fear, right? What might be another purpose of fear that you could think of? Maybe loneliness. You study and you like you need to be more included in society. You could be around others. Did you say loneliness? Yeah. So loneliness is reinforcing the behavior to include yourself within society? Yeah. Yeah, because that was important for our survival, right? Mm -hmm. Stop us from doing something that might hurt us? Yeah, stop us from doing something that might hurt us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Could you s sum it down to survival and evolution? Uh, at the root, yeah. So functionally, in modern society, for each of us, let's say um, heartbreak. What's the function of heartbreak? To make you like emotionally stronger. Yeah, yeah. We could say that about we could say that about all emotions as well. Yeah. Like that's one function that they have is that if we deal with them appropriately, for sure, uh -huh. emotional strength. Um, and then specifically with heartbreak, what effect would that have on the relationship? Uh, like your, your end of the relationship? So let's say you're in a happy relationship, but you've had heartbreak before. Uh -huh. Oh, well, it teaches you how to deal with those emotions better. Yeah, so it could teach you how to deal with emotions in the relationship you're in. Maybe it could reinforce the bond of the relationship. Heartbreak is a sort of future threat that allows not only us to value the relationship that we're in much more deeply, it creates context. It's, the, it's death that gives meaning to life. And in the same way, it's the death of a relationship that gives meaning to a relationship. So maybe most of us have experienced losing a partner and like really appreciating them much more deeply when they're gone. At least if we broke up in a healthy way. <laughs> And also when you're with somebody knowing that your heart can be broken, bonds you closer with them together, which again, it sort of encourages pair bonding and replication of our species. It encourage us, encourages us to create closer bonds, to like have offspring and continue our genetic line. What about sadness? Got something? I don't have like a, like there's, I feel like lots of answers, but I just immediately thought of 50 Cent saying, Joy wouldn't feel so good if it wasn't for him. Mm -hmm. 50 cent joy wouldn't yeah. feel so good if it wasn't for pain. Yeah. I thought he said jewelry would feel so good. <laughs> <laughs> no. I might have got that misconstrued. <laughs> That's like, yeah. <laughs> See, one of my favorite quotes. Just Not, like, yeah. it's for so many reasons, like, you know, just balance in life. But yeah, that's kind of what I think about sadness. Like, you need the darkness to see where the light is. Yeah. Kind of yeah, all of reality is an exercise in contrast, so we don't have the highs without the lows. It's only like with the lows that the highs can even exist. If the lows didn't even exist, all we have is one flat, stable existence without variation. And that, frankly, is the worst type of existence that I'm aware of anyway. There have been periods of time in my life where it's just like numb, blank, kind of nothing. And those are the ones that have scared me the most, you know, it's like existential, you know, what is anything like why even bother? Um, 
And so emotions really give the color and texture to our lives. It's the sadness that creates the joy and the heartbreak that creates the love and you know, the fear that creates the elation. The fighter who goes through the ordeal before the fight and the adrenaline during it has the elation upon winning. <laughs> Or someone that's just struggled, you know, for years and years and years. I watched this documentary on a guy named Michael Bisbing. He's a former UFC champion who spit a lot of a loud mouth, but this documentary was so well done. And I was going through my own period of ups and downs. And I, I watched this, this guy go through like, must have been, I guess, 10 years or something of wins and then a loss and he'd get sent back down and then he'd work his way back up and then he'd lose again and he'd work his way back up and he just kept on fighting and fighting and fighting. At one point, he took a head kick and lost his eye. <laughs> and he went through this crazy ordeal of like having doctors fix the like optic nerve in his eye so that he could fight again and then basically lying during eye tests to pass the eye test so that he would be legally cleared to fight. So now he's fighting with one eye and he's like, keep it. And he, he had a glass eye put in to make it look like he's, he's got to realize. So anyway, this guy is just, he's been doing martial arts since he was a kid and his dream is to be a UFC champion. And he's just like fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting. And finally, he gets a last second title shot because the contender dropped out. And I think he was the seventh ranked guy in middleweight or something like that. And he's fighting against Luke Rockhold in two weeks. And he said, he's like out of shape. He's been on a movie set doing an acting role. He's like, hasn't trained. And he goes for this like five mile sprint right away. He just took off running. He's like, I need to get in shape right now. So he starts running. And at the end of it, he's like, oh, I've got the cardio. Wow. I'm, maybe I can do this. And it's like a man whose time had come, you know, and he went into that fight on short notice, got a first round knockout and the like look in his eyes and his family's eyes and the, the joy was so intense. It actually brought me to tears. It was like watching this hero's journey story, but in real life. And that joy wouldn't have been possible without the years of struggle beforehand. So emotions really are the like spice and seasoning of our lives, you know, and it's maybe not optimal in most cases to cover our dish in like loads of seasoning and just be like emotionally all over the place. But without emotions, it's bland. And it's very plain and, you know, just not the same, you know, life's not the same. Hey, it's Taylor. If you enjoy this type of beyond basketball material, then I'd like to share something with you. So for the last few months, I've been writing a daily email newsletter for a small group of our deep game students who are interested in applying these principles beyond basketball to life as a whole. So we discuss things like finding your path in life, your purpose, even uh, advanced meditation and spiritual practice, love and relationships, building modern businesses, and generally speaking, the path to self mastery. And so if if you'd like to join that email list, then there's a link in the description and you'll be able to sign up for that list. And not only that, but when you sign up, I'll give you a 90 minute talk from our deep game retreat last summer where I shared for the first time ever the ninth law of the deep game. This is some of my favorite material that I've ever released. And if you like this type of talk, then you're really, really going to love what you see in these daily emails and of course in the ninth law session. So head over to the link in the description and I will see you over there.